Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Age of Dreadnoughts with the Spanish Empire. It is September 1892. We have 14 provinces controlled. We have a 3.2 unrest, naval prestige of 18, 29 active ships, which are nine light cruisers. Or, yeah, I think they're right, light cruisers. Yep. And then heavy cruiser, I always call them armored cruisers, but. Nine light cruisers, 20 torpedo boats. We have eight armored cruisers and five torpedo boats that are being built. We are not repairing or refitting any ships. Our technology is average. Our back shipyard size is 12,500 12, tons. We're making just under 700,000. And we have 233 million in the naval funds. 233,500,000. So we have that extra half a million. It's all about that. So as was, I was reminded, I should say, putting more money into uh, the transport capacity a little bit, I do want to keep the monthly balance positive. Will help in terms of the GDP over time and give you more money. When more money means more ships, honey, <laughs> and you know, or and or better ships, bigger, better, more, whatever you want to say. So we have three months remaining for all of the ships that we are building for Chile and Argentina. Most of them are torpedo boats, although two are heavy cruisers, armored cruisers, whatever you want to call them. We have a bunch of our light cruisers, which are commissioning, and they'll be ready in the next month. And then we're three months away for the armored cruisers that we are building ourselves. I was also kind of mentioned that if your research gets down to a month to take off the uh, priority to see if it's still a month remaining. Hmm. So you can see, I'm not sure if this is exactly what they meant, but I'm saving eight months on rangefinders by not having it clicked on engines right now. And I'm saving a month on internal protection, so I think I will click it off. Uh, torpedo propulsion, if I click that off, that does bring whole construction down to a month. So my problem is I don't know if I'll remember exactly where I put the priorities, but that does speed up some of this other technology. So I do think I'll do that. We are in September of 1892. We'll take a look at the political world. The British... I mean, they don't hate me, but they don't like me. They have 48 ships. Sorry. Just drinking some juice. Uh, German Empire, 31 ships. Trying to get them to like me a little bit better. The Russians, 49 ships, negative 6. French, 51 ships with a positive of 2. Chinese, negative 11. 30 ships. I'm, really, I'm not that worried about them. The United States, this is the one I really want to try to get more positive, negative 77. They only have 21 ships, but their GDP is 24 million. Their growth is 15%. Uh, the Austrians were trying to get to like us a little bit. They are our most friendly large nation. The Japanese don't really care about us. The Italians don't like us. I, I'm less worried about the Italians than the Americans, to be honest. We, again, have 29 ships. Our GDP is 7.4, growth 7.9. So, again, we are just lagging behind in terms of our GDP, which is, I think, where the comment about spending more money on the transports. So, you can see we are going to have 42 ships overall, which will put us on par with the Italians, roughly speaking. So we'll go ahead and we'll advance a turn and see how we do, or if we're able to get the United States to like us any better. Light. We have lighter boilers. Boilers are made lighter without losing heat efficiency, negative two and a half percent to boiler weight. Riveting techniques for hull construction. New mechanisms make the fastening of metal joints more effective, negative one percent hull weight. Negative two and a half percent ship construction time and negative three and a half percent to ship flaws. We did. Our instinct was right, and your efforts to strengthen relations with the United States was successful. Twelve positive relations with the U.S. and five naval prestige, which brings us up to twenty-three.
So we are at 35 ships now. We do not yet have a battleship. I don't know that we have the uh, the shipyard in order to take that on. We do have 33,000 out of 64,000 tons, so we could build a lot more ships. But at the same time, I don't want to overburden the economy. And also, I don't know exactly if these ships are really like high enough quality to say, you know what, well, let's really go in and you know build a whole lot more. A person has been arrested with strong evidence that he was spying on our country. The Minister of Foreign Affairs asked how he should act at a diplomatic level. Mm. We can hurt the relationships with the Russians, get positive prestige, what unrest. This would give us two prestige, but we would gain two unrest. And this would just all be bad. And we are trying to get the Germans on our side, so we'll blame the Russians. We can have a 45-ton heavy cruiser now. And we have basic crew medical treatment. Crew casualties can recover after battle due to the onboard medical facility. 5% crew healing salvage. 10% max crew trading. 5% trading efficiency. People of Jordan rise up. So, we just put out the Emperor Carlos V, which was put down in 1891, which is a 3,900 ton uh, armored cruiser, heavy cruiser. We obviously now have a more modern, I guess you could say, a stronger cruiser now, but I don't know if it's really worth it. Again, engine is kind of where I want to go. Although, again, what does that do? Because that obviously improves your capabilities and your efficiency. Belgium wants to order one of our heavy cruisers. They'll pay 25% in advance, 1.8 million, and the rest of the above will pay delivery after 10 months. Profit of 29%, 7.8 million, I will agree. Chile wants to order two more torpedo boats. We'll get 1.9 million overall. We'll, we'll do that as well. France tries to improve relations with us. They fail. Financially, we're making a little under half a billion. Um, again, the control station and the rangefinders have to deal with uh, gun accuracy, being able to spot um, the enemy, things like, uh, obviously, the radar device. So that's where that kind of comes in. We are one month away from putting our own heavy cruisers out, so we will go into 1893. Ottoman Empire regains full control of Transjordania. We're now making one and a half million based on the fact that we are no longer designing ships of our own or they're all, you know, put to sea. Again, we had, what, six heavy cruisers we put out, right? So the United States, negative 65, they like us better now. We'll try to improve relations with the Austro-Hungarians. We don't really have... I mean, the Italians, I think, are the ones we are going to have the most problem with. Uh, they don't seem to have... Persia and Mexico are their, are their allies. Well, they have 46 ships. We have 41 ships. They have more torpedo boats. We have more light cruisers. And they have slightly more heavy cruisers or armored cruisers. We are going to get some more armor quality in about five months. Once we do that, I think we might put down that larger uh, heavy cruiser. Although, again, we could just refit the ones we already have. That's also true. Typically, natural resources have been discovered in the following provinces in Galicia of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Russia provokes us. We do get 20 relations with Austro-Hungary and five naval prestige. That is awesome. China attacks Korea, the Empire of Japan, the United States, Britain, and France all don't like that. Netherlands have regained control of Malu Pass. Sorry. Um, can we try to get Germany to like us a little bit? Again, just 1.7 million is all we have pre 
and our economic growth is going by 0 0.636. So let's see here. What if we go up to 2.3% and see how that changes our economic growth as we go into March of 1893. So we increase our, our money we're spending on transports a little bit. Korea pushes back China. Germany plus 23 relations, five naval prestige. Netherlands has Java. Again, Ottoman and Empire regains control of Albania. Didn't really seem to have any impact on us right now. We're up to 109% on the transport capacity. So if you have transport capacity higher than 100%, your GDP receives bonuses. During the war, you will start having an economic impact with each loss of transport losses. All right, we'll go up to there, 3.6%. 109%. So again, we're spending a little bit more on the transports again. All right. Doesn't look like too much happened there. We will try to improve relations with the Austro-Hungarian Empire again. 1.4 million. And we're gaining just 6.636 6 yes, percent a month with our economic growth. And the British Empire presents us in an ultimatum demanding the extradition of a defector who requests amnesty from our country. The Minister of Justice asks for your advice about the situation. Uh, all right, we're going to negotiate to exchange him with something valuable to us. So we, we don't want to just return him because we don't get anything from that. We could take the un, lose the unrest and gain prestige, although we'll gain just one unrest and we'll gain $8.4 million uh, to our naval fund. So we will take the money, right? They can pay us for him, essentially. Argentina wants to order some torpedo boats, three of them. We'll get $3 million eventually. After six months, the Austro Hungarians did not want to like us a second time. Um, what about Germany? Will Germany like us a second time? We are one month away on the armor quality, two months. Okay, so taking that off, it changed it to four. Two months on hull protection. We're going to have a new destroyer in 11 months. Four months on the control station. The range finders were still 17 months away. At a pre press conference, you were asked about recent evidence that foreign espionage targets our Navy. How do we respond? We'll say it's made for internal political games will lose prestige, but we also get rid of all the unrest we have. Harvey armor. Harvey process improves a nickel steel compound armor by case hardening the front surfaces of the armor plates. Procedure called face hardening makes the front plate more effective in breaking up an incoming shell while the rear plate can still absorb splinters and hold the armor together. Plus negative 50% armor weight all types, plus 50% armor cost all types, and plus 50% armor strength. Argentina, again, wants two more torpedo boats. Germany does not like us, or does not want to like us that much, however you want to say it. Uh, so, we'll take off the priority for right now. What is coming up technology-wise? We have turret mechanism. We're a few months away from anything, so I don't really want to put anything down. We are up to 3.4 million, though, so the, the money is starting to come in. Can we... What would that be? Negative 3 million. We're going to do negative 3 million, but we're going to try to build or expand our shipyards. Because I would like to be able to put a battleship down. 
We have torpedo protection and hull protection. The standard torpedo protection reduces chances of getting sucked from a torpedo hit. Protection can work against side hits from mine. A negative 20% torpedo damage, negative 20% torpedo flooding, negative 3% mine hit damage. Costs more weight. It's more expensive. Uh, we're building 4% again. Uh, so we're losing a little bit of money trying to build up our shipyards. Voice tubes with whistles. A removable cork mounted whistle creates a distinctive sound that announces an urgent call, ensuring interest ship communication even during the noise of battle, plus 2.5% gun aiming speed and 1% gun base accuracy. We also have the improved turret gearbox, which means a more efficient gearbox, plus 5% turret traverse speed. Flag communication. Uh, ships can communicate with each other only with flag or light signals, thus their communication range is severely limited according to visibility. Negative 95% communication range. Ottoman Empire regains control of Lebanon. Uh, one month on hull strengthening. We have mines. You know, we have a few months remaining. We're may our economy is starting to come up a little bit. We're still losing two and a half, a little bit over two and a half million as we expand our shipyards. We have new structural steel, which gives us 2.5% hull form resistance and hull weight. We also have the battleship free hull that is now available to us. And a submarine early theory, although the early submarines are not yet used in organized naval warfare, is valuable to gain more knowledge about them and prepare for any enemy who wishes them to use them as a weapon against us. 2.5% defense power versus submarines. We're going to turn Belgium down here. Uh, uh, for 18 million after 10 months? Actually, no, we won't. And Argentina wants to order three of the heavy cruisers, 25% in advance, 5.6 million. So we'll get a, an increase of 36% or 25 million after 10 months. Germany strengthens relations with us. Uh, Italy provokes us. Financially, we're losing 6 million now. Probably because we are building a bunch of ships, I would imagine. Uh, but that's okay. I mean, I won't. I mean, okay. I don't know if that's okay, but that sounds weird. But we have one month remaining for mine, so I am going to try to get a few more months in before we build our battleship three. Because we have defensive minefield, deploying minefields around our ports or coastal waters is an essential protective measure. This could now be possible if you use my layer ships to deploy mines. 1,000 max minefield size. Belgium wants to have a light cruiser. Fine. I have a hard time saying no to these, you know, little countries. I probably should because it's, you know, hurting my economy, obviously, or the amount of money I have. But at the same time, you get money back. Uh, we have another cruiser design, a destroyer design. We're getting some guns. So, you know, in a few months, we are going to go ahead and lay out some new chip designs. Uh, we have the 8-inch casemate guns. Large holes can support up to 8-inch casemates. Belgium wants a torpedo boat. That's fine. That's fine. And that's why I typically just kind of scrap vessels, as we have a 510-ton torpedo boat now that we can have. We have white powder and explosives, the first smokeless powder, otherwise known as powder B. Is a highly effective material to use as a propellant. It sends shells at larger ranges, but is unsafe in storage conditions compared to earlier powder. One and a half percent to gun range, one percent to gun base accuracy, two and a half percent to shell penetration, negative ten percent to shell weight. Costs more plus five percent by twenty five percent. Five percent increase in shell muzzle velocity, seven and a half for ammo detonation and flash fire. Ten percent for flash fire explosion chance, and twenty percent for the flash fire spreading chance. Argentina wants a light cruiser. I mean, and I'm saying yes to all this because right now I'm not ready to build any cruisers or battleships or destroyers of my own. So I don't really see the need to necessarily go in and uh, do that. We have small guns and big guns in three months and two months, rangefinders in four. 
We'll have another cruiser design in two, special machinery in three, torpedo propulsion in three. So in two to three months, we're going to start designing a lot of ships. Uh, the Naturalist Party is what the election for to do government. Politically, let's go in here and see the United States negative 65, Austro-Hungarians are at 79. We'll try to improve relations with them. Uh, one month for small guns, one month for a cruiser design. So it'll take us to February of 1894. So we have a 5,000 ton heavy cruiser. And we have the three inch Mark II guns. Argentina wants another light cruiser. Austro Hungary and us are about to become allies because we're at 96 now. People of Zaire try to gain control of the Congo Free State that is currently occupied by Belgium. Well, that one impacts me maybe a tiny bit because we are selling a bunch of ships to Belgium. So I guess in that regard, it kind of impacts me a little bit. So. Yeah, our growth is just at 5.6%. We're, we're really struggling in terms of our growth. Uh, we'll just go ahead and advance another turn. We have the lighter reciprocating system, negative 4% to engine weight. And we have guns of previous technology are replaced by the newest MK-1 13-inch guns. We also have these three-cylinder panomic, panomic motor. An improved torpedo engine, which still uses compressed air as fuel, but has one extra cylinder providing more speed and range. 1,150 meters torpedo range, 27 knots, 3% accuracy, negative 1% nud chance. I, I'm going to tell Chile no this time. The United States provokes me. That kind of worries me a little bit. That worries me a little bit because, sorry, politics, not research. Uh, yeah, negative 80. So we're going to go in here. We're going to try to improve relations with the United States. We'll let the range finder technology happen, and then we'll probably start uh, designing ships here as we get into April. So hopefully we'll be able to get the United States to like us a little bit more than what they do right now. And I am going to try to fight a war. I think in my perfect world, I'm going to fight the Italians. Like the Austro-Hungarians would have made sense as well, as they're a relatively weak, more minor nation. But for some random reason, I have a soft spot for the Austro-Hungarian Empire. I don't really know. And because you know, it kind of makes sense. Perfectly obviously, there's the connection of the Habsburg royal family between Austria, Hungary, and Spain. Um, and also, Spain used to control part of Italy. So, from a historical standpoint, it kind of makes a little bit of sense that potentially Spain would be interested in uh, reclaiming Italy. And again, I don't think I enough at building ships or my technology is up to par and especially not without a powerful ally I don't know if Austria-Hungary really qualifies as a super powerful ally if I'm ready to take on a country such as like Britain or the United States or France so during a foreign visit in a Russian empire our finance minister received a severe blow at his head yeah we're going to take the prestige and take the negative 10 relations with Russia we have coincidence range fighters an optical device that measures the distance of a targeted ship using a single eyepiece the viewer adjusts the lenses until the two reflected images become a perfect match. This equipment improves the aiming process of base accuracy of the guns. Ethiopia puts pushes back France. We get better relations with the United States. That is fantastic. Still losing two million. We are still losing two million. Because, we're, again, we're, we're building 40% of our shipbuilding capacity. So, we have three months remaining on shells. So, I think we'll actually wait for that. Wow. What just happened? Is that Russia? Somebody just vanished. Argentina wants to order some boats. No. Somebody just vanished. I don't know who. Some, somebody just vanished. I don't know who that was. They all just kind of disappeared. That was kind of weird. I didn't pay enough attention to know who it was initially. 
So two months for shells, one month for maneuver warfare, and three months for eternals. So apologies that we're not putting down a whole bunch of ships or we're not at war right now. Uh, I'm just trying to increase my shipyard, do some research. Several of our country's shipbuilding industries are constructing warships for third countries, what are our opinions? Yeah, we will say it's a good thing. We'll get some positive relationships. We'll get some GDP. We'll gain some unrest, unfortunately. We have crew trading doctrine. Crew members are commissioned in ships with higher basic training and are able to keep it higher training without combat because of the updated training doctrine, which keeps up with the latest naval technology. 50% max crew training, 10% training efficiency. Nope. France tries to strengthen our relations. Russia provokes us. Germany tries to strengthen relations with us. That's nice. I'm trying to see that France is trying to be my friend. I don't think that's ever happened. The only other time I played Spain for any length of time in this game, I went to war with France. So that's a little bit different. And actually, the boiler getting a better boiler. So yeah, three. This is one of my problems. I was like, ah, oh, we're so close on the technology. And we are doing a little bit better financially, just down to one negative 1.3, just negative 1.3 million. That's all we're losing is 1.3 million every month. That's it. Nothing to see here. But point being, again, since I do like to try to just build new versions of the ship rather than refit them, which is probably dumb, but it's how I do it. So, you know, sue me. I visited an international weapons exhibition. Journalist asked about your impressions. Uh, we can gain some unrest, but get 21 million by saying some of the weapon exhibits were fascinating superior to our own. We don't lose prestige, and we gain 21 million. So we'll take the unrest. It's not great. I know. I know. But we'll take the unrest. We, so we have CPC, the common pointed cap shell. A common pointed shell, which has an extra soft cap on the nose, which helps it to penetrate further to a steel plate before detonating. A CPC shell has a higher penetrating power than a typical HE shell, but carries a slightly lighter bursting charge. A little bit more range, less fuse time, more penetration, a little less damage. It's a little bit more costly, 25%. And a little bit heavier, but it's got a little bit better velocity. And again, that put this up to 328 million. Hey, we're 2.7 million in the positive now. That's big. So we can put a little bit more into transport capacity. I don't want to go all in. I know that would probably be better if I did, but I do like see that nice, healthy, positive um, balance. This is good. We have reinforced bulkheads, making the hull's intersection thicker, makes the ship heavier, but also more durable against lighting and fire. So we have more floatability, plus 5% hull cost and weight, 7.5% flash fire chance, 10%, negative 10% chance for a spreading. That was negative 75 for the flash fire, negative 5% chance of fire, and negative or positive 10% for fire extinguishing. Argentina wants to have some ships. We're going to tell them no. Greece defeats the remnants of the Ottoman Empire's forces and gained control of Crete. Good for Greece, who, of course, we are playing as in our Victoria 3 series. One month away on the boiler, and that is when we will put down our new vessels. 3.2 million now, so we'll put a little bit more into the transport capacity. We'll get it to September of 1894, and that's where we will start looking into putting down our ships. International Cockpits, journalist asked about your naval expenditure policy. Mm. We're equipped with everything necessary to defend itself, and is currently focusing on training the crew. We get 10.7 million plus 25% naval funds and one prestige. We can get two more unrest and get 25.8 million. Or we could say we don't need any money in order to take prestige and unrest. I'm going to go for the middle option. We have advanced medium funnels. New technologies allow the mounting of larger funnels on medium-sized ships, which offer more capacity, aiding the engines to reach their maximum efficiency. So that is good. That is good. We're up to three 
that's about three and a half million. Uh, so we're going to go in here now and we're going to design some ships and then we'll probably wrap up the episode at that point in time. And actually what we're also going to do, negative 72 with the United States, the Italians only have 26 ships. We are going to increase tension. Oh, God, they have an alliance with the Austro-Hungarians as well. That stinks. Um, because once you get to 100, that's that, that's what you do. So we're going to go in here, and we're going to put down a new ship. So, to be honest... This is the battleship 3, the Santa Rosa. I do like that. What is the maximum speed? 18 knots. That's not very good. What we'll go with for right now, we have the triple expansion steam engine. We have, well, we had a better boiler than that, but apparently not. Uh, anti torpedo 1. I thought we had, the, okay, there's the reinforced bulkhead. We have the Citadel one. Uh, we're going to go with the Harvey armor. 86%. I thought the Harvey armor was negative 50% armor weight cost. Well, I guess it was. Right? It was. So the Harvey armor. The very slow moving ship, obviously. Uh, we want standard crew quarters. Main power. The large cage mass. The front tower one gives us better aiming. It also is going to really, really hurt us in terms of the weight. 93%. We have put down no guns and we're at 93% weight here. Uh... We can't put that one down. Standard funnel. We can't put two down here, apparently. So, 30.7 efficiency on the engine. Obviously not great. Ah, uh, boy, oh boy, oh boy. Okay, so our center line guns, 776 tons. We want for the 13 inch. Yep. Which we can't have. We can't, we can't put a second one down? It's 776... No, it's 1,023 tons. That still is at 12,050. What is it talking about? It's 12,090. It's not 12,500. How is it overweight? How does it gain... 2,000 from something that weighs a thousand. I'm so confused right now. Uh, we're going to go to gun cotton. White powder. Uh, we're going to go soft cap shells, which is a little bit heavier. We're going to have a range finder, which increases the weight. Uh, uh, I don't know if we can go with a 13-inch gun. I mean, we're still at 93%. I think we'll go with four inch casemate. I can, what what would nickel steel be? Ninety eight percent. Okay, that's even worse. Uh, okay. Um. Wow. It's seven hundred and ninety two thousand. 582 tons, though. Again, where is this weight coming from? Wait, wait. I am so confused right now. So I put one down. I uh, My weight is 10,800. I put something else down that weighs 700 tons. And it's supposedly going to take up more than 2,000 tons. How? Game. How? So I, 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 can't, I can't put down a second main gun. Or that's the smallest gun. I, 
I don't understand. Like how your map goes from 700 to 2000. And I can slow it down. And that will... We're overweight. We put five inch secondary guns. Okay, so I guess we can do that. Uh, we'll put a few three inchers down. Or two three inches down, I guess. Um, I guess it's red here. I'm not really sure. Obviously, you would want to put torpedo launchers in, which is going to increase our weight even more. Uh, and we're about 500 pounds, give or take, overweight. If we went down to like 17.5, what would that be? Not much. That doesn't really make any difference. Right, so essentially we're going to have to take some armor off. Uh, the main belt. Bill too much. I mean, we're getting closer. I don't really want to take any more weight off. It doesn't have to be as thick. I mean, we are just barely... Just barely, just barely uh, underweight. So, 12,485 tons out of 12,500. I really don't know that I love this ship very much. Um, we don't have a battleship, but you know what? I don't. I don't like it. I don't like it. Um, I just. I, maybe I'll build it in the next episode. But right now, I don't like it. So we're gonna go back here. We are gonna try to build a new ship. But I just. Sorry. I just. I didn't like it. I did not like it. We're gonna go with our armored cruiser. Yeah, the armored cruiser, I guess, we will go because we had a turret cruiser, I think, for the other one. So we'll go with an armored cruiser here. We can only get to 12,500 on battleship. I don't feel like that's very good. So we will call this the Santa Ana. I don't, I don't want to call it that. Um, the Queen Isabella. All right, so the Queen Isabella, obviously. Um, well, again, we'll go here to standard quarters. Triple expansion steam engine. What, 20.5 knots, I think, was the maximum speed, correct? Yep. 280 crew. Although we have 149 right now, so... If we go... Spacious, we'll have 175 crew. They're going to be cadets. All right, 61%. Again, if we go to the Harvey, armor, reinforced bulkhead, citadel. Again, we're just at 61%. This is like why I did not like the battleship there. I just did not feel like that was a very good 
design. We'll go there. Front Tower 2, which has the better aiming. It also gives a better target signature, so there is that. But I do tend to prioritize aiming over target signature. So the highlighted middle area shows the whole sections which are reinforced to support the engine and the main gun system. They weigh more than the aptitude four sections, affecting the overall stability of the ship and structural integrity. The underwater sections have the engine rooms are highlighted with a darker red color. When these sections become damaged during battle, the corresponding engines may become damaged. As a result, the ship may become significant, significantly slowed down. The ship has armor, the main belt, and main deck. It can close the highlighted middle area, so the main belt and main deck, okay. The special citadel protection scheme provides the inner layers can be enabled for extra protection. The whole center of gravity not containing the ship parts is displayed with a white line. The white dot shows the height of the center of gravity in relation to the hull. It can be offset as various design choices affect the total weight of the hull. Okay, so wait, what did it say? It said the main belt and main deck. All right. We get a large nope. Really? This is as good as we're going to get for an engine. We can't get a large funnel. 18.7 engine efficiency. Wow. I mean, that's just... Wow. That's just... Wow, that's just terrible. Like, there's no other way for that to be even described as besides terrible. So if we go for two 11-inch barrel, uh, it looks like they're a little too big. So what about 10-inch? There we go. And the poor sector of fire. Why? What's in its way? I don't understand. Is it not long enough? I don't understand why it's got a poor sector of fire. So we have two nine inch. You can't really put a secondary gun anywhere, which So we've got a bunch of four inch barrels. We'll have add a couple three inch casemate guns. Just to kind of change it up a little bit. Uh, torpedo launchers, obviously. We're up to 93% weight now. And we can go to the soft capped. We'll go gun cotton, white powder. Down to 92, 17 inch torpedoes. The coincidental rainfinder puts this up to 93%. I mean, I don't hate this ship. I like it better than the, um, the battleship we tried to do. So our main deck, we have 1.5 inches of armor right now. Uh, the pitch is at 50%. It's in red. We're trying to get that into orange. What else is the main belt and the main deck? So the main belt. And then if we did the super, this what, the Citadel, right, I believe is what it said. Protect the, that's where the engines are, right, in the sections. Uh, right, so, all right, 96%. It's going to cost us 8.6 million. 
engine capacity is only 18.7. The pitch and the four and the roll are, you know, all right. The four is offset by a little bit. Uh, all right. The beam is supposed to be negative nine to 10,000. Drought, or drought, negative 15 to 16 and a half. So the beam would actually increase the offset weight of the four. Is there any way we can the four deck? Oh, well, that makes it worse. Okay. So the app deck then should make it better. There we go. So this will affect plunging fire from the rear. Superstructure, that doesn't really impact anything. So then if we have the aft belt, that should also protect the stern of the ship. Because we're trying to get the four offset weight to go away. They don't know if we're going to quiet it. Feet. We go two inches on the aft belt. Oh well, yeah, the main belt. Also, the main deck also does that. So the aft out that weight is just at 0.1%. I can live with that. I can live with that. So 8.4 million. We're underweight. It is the Queen Isabella. That is the name of our new ship. It is another heavy armored cruiser. Don't know how well it's, you know, it's a little bit faster than the Emperor Carlos. Three years newer. A little bit, just over a million more. Just over a million more. Hey, that's all. Just one million more. That's all we need. Um, 4,700 tons. Got two by two nine inch guns, then eight point three and two knots faster. What are we making? We're making three point five million. So let's try to build three Queen Isabellas. What is that? It puts us at one point two. And we'll say again, we will go Barcelona. Uh, Karuna Cadiz. Or where we're going to put that down. And. I think that'll take us, what, 11 months to build? We will advance the turn. And so what we're going to do is we're going to try to get the Germans on side. No, Chile, we don't want to do that. We lose prestige because the Italians are just like, man, we don't care about you. <laughs> You're trying to provoke us. We don't care. Uh, Germany, come on. We need you. I mean, the United States kind of likes me. France, where are you? France. You have 70 ships. You're building 13 more. I mean, that's just insane. Uh, France kind of likes me, but not that much. Bulgaria signs the relation. China? Okay. Uh, Chile wants another ship. We're going to say no. Germany improves our relations by plus 8 to 5 for Steve. Russia tries to strengthen our relationships, which was successful. It's a little weird. Usually, um, again, I've been playing a lot of Austria-Hungary, so not always on friendly terms with the Russians. Plus 2.3 million. We're, we certainly have plenty of space in our shipbuilding. Um, we 
we'll wait another month. We'll go to December, and then we'll put down three more of the Queen Isabella's in our home ports. Secondary double turrets for capital ships and naval secondary double turrets for battleships and heavy cruisers. And so battle cruisers. Uh, 3.1 million is what we're making right now. Three more months for another cruiser design. Three more months for explosives. Seven months for armor or hull strengthening. 21 months for armor foraging. I'm going to go in here and use one on engines because I just, the engine efficiency is killing me. So. We'll build three more. We're down to 800,000. And again, we'll go to Barcelona, La Corona, Cadiz. Again, we've got now six more armored heavy cruisers, armored cruisers, whatever you want to call them. We're going to have 12 of those, 15 light cruisers, 20 torpedo boats. That's not bad. Right, that's not bad. Italy has 16 ships. The Austro-Hungarians have 27 ships. Germany, we're going to try to improve relations with. They only have 28 ships. We have a lot of old ships that aren't that great, but we are going to try to provoke the Italians again here in 1895 because now is the time to strike. Uh, the British Empire and the Southern England has oil, okay, and Sumatra has oil. The Kiel Canal is now accessible. Germany did not want to be our friends. It's kind of it's frustrating, but it's cracking me up. So they're only building five ships. So they have twenty-eight, they have sixteen, and they're building two. The negative seventy-two. We're going to try to increase tension. We're trying to increase tension. We want. A war, which sounds terrible, I know. Well, we do want a war. Now is our time to attack the Italians and the Hungarians, and the Austro-Hungarians. Could we guarantee a victory over the United States in the upcoming war? Hell no! Uh, yeah, we'll lose the prestige, we'll lose unrest, and we'll get true relations with the United States. No, we can't guarantee a war. We did, we did manage to to upset the Italians, though. So that's good. No, we cannot guarantee a victory over the United States. Are you are you dang mind? Um, they have 46 ships. They're building 13. They're growing at 15.1%. They have a GDP of 34 billion. We have a GDP of 10 billion. We're growing at 5.6%. And, I mean, chip-wise, we're not that far apart, right? But in terms of, like, we're going to try to improve relations with the United States, actually. But in terms of being able to guarantee a victory over the United States, no. More natural resources for the Netherlands. The United States did not want to get better relations with me. That's frustrating, but not surprising. We're six and eight months away on our newer heavy cruisers. Kind of makes me want to put the old ones down. But again, if we're going to get... Um, a war with the Italian. Oh, we could have hurt. We could have hurt our relations with the Italians even more there. So we have a 37-ton light cruiser, so we can build a semi-armored cruiser. And we have a new hull. We have plus five percent mine damage from mine detonators. One. We also have the mine sweeping wires. Small ships can be converted into mine sweepers and follow the fleet task force to detect and clean up dangerous enemy mines. A larger fleet supports more mine sweepers that can detect and clean up mines at a larger radius. While mine sweeping is active, the maintenance of the fleet becomes increased. Mine sweeping one. The United States provokes us, which is just awful because God, dang it. Come on, Dewey, don't don't do this to me. Um 
right? <laughs> like, we're making two million, we're at 88% in our shipyard. Stop trying to provoke me. Like, I know you want Cuba, I know you want us out of there. No, Argentina. The United States really does not want to be our friend. Gosh dang it. Um, they don't, they don't, not only do they not want to be our friend, they want to, they want to fight us. They want to fight us, which I'd want to fight me too if I was them. Although we are highly respected right now in our naval prestige, right? Can we improve relations with the Germans? Because then we would have a powerful ally who might come in on our side. No, Argentina. I, I, Germany plus 18 relations, five naval prestige. The British tried to improve relations with us, but failed. If I can have a powerful ally, I'm less worried about the United States. I mean, we're still all alone over there, but we have a stronger friend around our homeland, and maybe eventually the German Navy can get to North America. As things stand right now, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the United States on my own, that would not be good. That would not be good. It would not be good at all. And I am going to try again to improve relations with the United States. Um, what the heck was I waiting for here? Oh, two months on the engine, right. That's what I was waiting on. So we'll design the semi-armored cruiser. We, yeah, the United States doesn't care. The Russian Empire provokes us. Germany! Come be my friend, please. Thank you. Please. Um, okay, so we're thinking. Natural resources. Hey, we have oil in the Spanish Philippines, or East Philippines, sorry. Multiple expansion, steam engine one. Awesome. Awesome. Chile wants more torpedo boats. We say no. Branch now provokes me. That's more like it. Germany does not like me. Any more than they already did. Gosh dang it. Uh -huh. <laughs> ah, why, why can't, won't you be, why can't we be friends, Germany? Come on. I, I'm doing okay. Yeah, I got a lot of money, so I'm going to put some more money into the transports. Um, and while I also have a lot of money, I'm going to build a couple more Queen Isabella's. Um, Sorry for that. We'll build two. We'll put one into the Havana. We'll put one into uh, Santiago. And that will be the main area that we try to do that. We have the new engine, so we're going to go in and we are going to build our Semi-armored cruiser, the light cruiser can go 21.5, the turret cruiser. You know, you know what? We'll build another light cruiser, actually. Uh, the Nephew Tano? No, we'll call it the CL. I don't know. Um... I think. I'm drawing a blank here. Uh, yeah. What if we called it uh, the Madrid, right? We call the Madrid the Madrid class light cruiser. I was just trying a blank. Sorry, twenty one and a half knots. I do typically try to have them go as fast as possible. 
So we do have, we still don't have the better boiler, but we do have the multiple expansion steam engine now. Again, we will go the Harvey, reinforced bulkhead, the Citadel, mine layer, put this up to 59%, crew will have standard quarters. Main tower can only have the front tower. Secondary, yeah. we'll go for rear tower one. A little less aiming, a little less target though. Funnels, the angled funnel. Put this at 65% with three funnels. For engine efficiency, the roll's at 58.9, though, so that, that that might not be great. Well, that actually made it better, so never mind. Uh, okay, so we'll go main guns. It's a light cruiser, so we'll go 5-inch barrels. There, we'll go... Five inch barrels there. Can we move this thing at all? Move that up there. So what if we want a four inch? Can we move this at all? No? Okay. So we do have a bunch of four inch uh, main guns as well. Well, three inch for casemates. Eh, you know, I mean, it's not great, but... Uh, um, torpedo launchers, right? At 82%, we got about 700 tons we can go. What if we did... What would 23 not be? 91. All right. 48% engine efficiency. But I'll take the trade off. We can also go. Well, we'll leave. And we'll upgrade all of our firearms. I guess I thought I had. We'll have enhanced reloading on the light cruiser. We already have the range. Do we have the range trainer? No, we don't. Now we do. 91%. Is there anything we can do? Okay, so the main deck. Help. Superstructure doesn't help. I mean, the armor is helping, don't get me wrong, but it's not reducing the... roll. And so if we increase the diameter, diameter, sorry, the gun barrel length affects the length of the gun rifle. A longer rifle increases the shell's range and muzzle velocity, thus its penetration capabilities. A longer rifle also increases the cost and weight of the gun while it decreases its fire rate. Guns with shorter rifles have a significantly higher fire rate bonus and are also considerably cheaper and lighter. What does the diameter do? It affects all characteristics of the gun and most importantly the range, accuracy, damage, and penetration capabilities. Increasing the diameter inevitably increases the turret size, so the armor and steel construction weight and cost it can increase considerably. By adjusting the diameter of the gun, it's possible to find an optimal gun performance and at the same time keep the weight and cost of the ship at a desirable setting. So, if we went to 5.2. 
and four five point three and four point two. And then if we increase the casemates to three point two. Whoops, sorry. Three point three point two. Well we'll do three point one. So that'll be our new light cruiser, the Madrid. You know, it's okay, right? I think, I hope. I don't know that it's great by any stretch, but I think it's okay. So we have a new heavy cruiser. We have a new light cruiser. In the next episode, I'll put down a new torpedo boat, and we'll start um, kind of mothballing some of these. But, again, it's a little bit quicker. Um, a little bit heavier, a little bit more expensive, you know, not a great deal different. But we will build, we build, let's build five of those. What would that put us at financially? 4.5 million, we're building 41,000 out of 74,000 tons. And okay, so again, we'll, we'll put this in Santiago. Another one in Santiago, and, and and well, I guess we can because it's yeah. There we go. That in Santiago. I'll put. Then we'll go the West Philippines. We'll get a couple, and then. Uh, I don't know. Uh, we'll put another one in Havana. So, we're trying to reinforce Cuba, obviously, because of the potential of the war with the United States. We're reinforcing our Pacific fleet a little bit. Because, uh, again, the United States could technically hit us over there. And that's where we're going to wrap up today's episode. Thank you to anybody and everybody for watching. I will try to continue to improve to do better in the future. And I will hopefully be around and talk to you all later. Thank you, everyone.